Hey there, it is David Gordon from Theater Mania. It is Friday, July 24th. Uh, made it to the end of another White Knuckle Week. Uh, I'm here with Mary Neely, a uh, writer, performer. Uh, you might have seen her on Twitter doing fun musical theater reenactment videos. Is that what you, is that what you call them? Yeah, reenactments. I feel like they could fall under parody yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they are hilarious. Uh, I'm going to play 30 seconds of your Hamilton one now. Okay. So people watching at home can see. Oh my gosh. Okay. Uh, I hope this works. So you even got like the color scheme of their outfits down. Yeah, I had so much fun like with the costumes and the makeup and everything. Um, I was just like, you know what? I might as well go for it because what else am I going to do? I'm just at right. home. When did you decide to, when did you start doing these and how did you decide to like make it as a thing? Yeah, I started at the very end of March. Um, and so it was basically like my entire April and May was making these videos. And then I did every song from The Sound of Music. Um, <laughs> and uh, it was like really just because I wanted to exercise my creativity because we're all in this, I mean, back then back then right. it feels like i'm like it feels so nostalgic watching yeah. that video even though it was like really not that long ago just because like so much has happened but um when i when when the lockdown happened you know i live in los angeles i was like wow like you know nothing is going on i can't go to auditions i can't do anything i just want to make i just want to make things and it really just became something that was creatively fulfilling for me that i i didn't see as like a career opportunity like I was just like oh I I just I love musicals obviously and like I used to listen to musical theater every single day when I was in high school and in elementary middle school and I I was just like well what if I bring back that feeling of of escapism now in my adult life when I because I, I studied theater when I was younger and then I got way more into film so what if I combine like theater and film in this way and it just became this routine that I did every day Cause I did like 10 in a row for 10 days. So I made a video a, video a day right. and at first like no one was paying attention. And then by the ninth and 10th one, people were like taking notice. And I was like, oh wow, this is kind of like becoming a thing that other people enjoy, not just my parents. Right. You know? When did you, what was the point, which or which was the one that you, when you realized people were actually like looking at it and seeing it? Well, I was like, I was filming West Side Story, which was the 10th one. And I had posted the Wicked one, which was the ninth one. And I remember seeing prominent people, like as I was filming, like I was like, cause I use my phone to film. Right, yeah. And so like, as I was filming myself, I saw these notifications on my Twitter and I was like, oh my God. And so I was like trying to go between like finishing the West Side Story one and like looking at the notifications and not, cause it's like, you know, when people start looking at you, I think there's like certain pressure for artists where, cause before that I just like really felt free and I could just like be creative and not think about it. But then I was like, oh, people are, are watching me. I, I better deliver or something. But then I, I kind of got that idea out of my head and I was like, just do the same thing that you've been doing literally every day. <laughs> Did it scare you to know that like real people were watching it and like strangers were looking at it? Um, I mean, I did feel like the pressure a little bit, but then it kind of quickly just like went away because I was like, I've been preparing for this. It feels like my whole life. <laughs> like all the times I was like singing alone in my bedroom for like years. I'm like, here we are. Right. Have you heard from uh, Lynn manuel about the Hamilton video? Yeah, he, well, he retweeted it and that was like this life changing moment. Cause like, as soon as he retweeted it, cause that one was like later in the thread. Yeah. It was, I, cause I think I did 16 and I think that one was like the 15th. 
So it was like the second to last one. And by that point, like a lot of people were watching and waiting for me to post them. But when he retweeted the Hamilton one, I was getting calls from like news stations and like publications and everyone being like, Lynn likes your video. And I'm like, I can't believe it. And then he ended up retweeting my Beauty and the Beast one and he retweeted the sound of music as well, which I was so, I mean, I'm so grateful for like, he's like the king. He's the king. Tell me about tell me about how you filmed them and and how you picked the shows that you did. Are they just shows that you liked? Yeah, honestly, it's all just shows that I feel like have meaning to me. Like the all the shows that I would listen to by myself when I was younger, or the ones that I saw that I was like really taken by or whatever. Um, because I, I and I really wanted to be careful about the ones that I chose because I didn't want to choose ones that I didn't know because it wouldn't feel as authentic. Right. Um, and so every word of the shows that you're doing, that's the thing. I'm like, well, I already know the words to everything. So <laughs> might as well just uh, keep it in the family. I guess. Yeah. Was, <laughs> um, was it hard to like sync up with the, the rhythms of the album in terms of the lip syncing? Not really, like, because it's, it's funny, like, I was worried, I was like, what if I don't remember these lyrics, because I used to know so many lyrics, like, by heart, right. but as soon as I started playing them, I was like, oh, I remember this, like, which is funny how your brain, like, works that way, it's, like, embedded somewhere in the back. It's always, it's always just like, yeah. I was in The Sound of Music as a kid, and I could still probably do every word about. yes yes exactly i know i mean i watched that movie like so many times that uh, but it was the same thing where i was like am i gonna remember and i'm like yep i fully remember um so i would like play my laptop i would have my laptop and i would play the song on my laptop and then i would film with my phone um so that's like one technical aspect of it when why did you decide to do the whole sound of music Oh my gosh. Well, I wasn't planning on it. Like literally I thought that after I did the beauty and the beast one, I was like, this is it. Like, this was great. But like, you know, got to finish with a bang. Like, right. here you go, whatever. But the response was just so overwhelming. Like it was so, it was nothing I've ever experienced. Just like so many people messaging me the sweetest, like nicest things. Like, just about how much joy the videos were bringing them. And and then also just like all of a sudden this influx of followers and people looking to me. And, you know, I, I kind of felt like it was a little bit of my responsibility because I was able to make things that brought people joy. So that was part of it. But like there was this kind of like demand from people where they were like, we need more. And I was like, Oh my gosh, what? Like <laughs> that's never yeah. happened to me. And you know, people were saying I would watch an entire show of this. And it was around the same time that people were saying this to me, that there was an announcement that at that time, Broadway right. theaters would remain dark until the fall. Right. Um, and now of course it's even longer, unfortunately, but I thought like, you know, this is so amazing that everybody loves these videos, but I kind of want to give back. Like I want to like, I want, I want to return the favor a little bit because it really is so meaningful to me that I am use, I used these songs that helped me so much when I was younger and like the men and women and everybody who sang on those soundtracks, like, don't have jobs like a lot of them don't right. have jobs right now and so i partnered with broadway cares and did a fundraiser so it i was like well i i, I didn't plan on doing more videos but if i'm going to i really gotta like go hard and so that's why i just i was like a combination of kind of wanting to like do it for the fans and also like you know as an appreciation to all the broadway performers who like sang me to sleep every night basically. Um, and so, yeah, I did, I, I did like for a week, I released um, videos for The Sound of Music where I would do two videos a day and then in conjunction with this fundraiser, and we ended up raising like $25,000 for COVID relief. That's amazing. 
yeah, it was so incredible. I like still can't believe it. <laughs> beyond uh, beyond Lynn retweeting it, who is the person that you heard from that like freaked you out the most? Like that you were most starstruck by? Honestly, Kelly O'Hara. Nice. Because I saw her in The Light in the Piazza and I saw her in South Pacific and I was always like such a fan. I mean, I listen. I was like obsessed with Light in the Piazza when I was like 15 or something. I feel I like, like everybody goes through that, that phase. Absolutely. I was like, I want to be in love in Italy or whatever. Like, <laughs> and the music is just so gorgeous. And like, she is such an incredible, consistent performer. And like, I actually, well, Matthew Morrison retweeted my Light in the Piazza video the same day that I found out that I was getting a cat. So <laughs> I, I named my cat Fabrizio Naturelli after his character in Light in the Piazza. But then when Kelly O'Hara retweeted, I was like, this is insane. Like, And then you changed your cat's name to Clara. Or to, gender. Yeah, yeah, to Kelly. Yeah, yeah, Clara. <laughs> you are a true geek and I love it. <laughs> um, what are you working on these days? Like, how do you top this? Oh my gosh, right? Well, I um, I actually shot a movie that I got cast in, in quarantine. Like I shot it over Zoom, which was really interesting. And we something. just, what? That must have been something. Oh my gosh, it was so wild. Like, yeah, I was literally just sitting at this table basically shooting a movie. Um, and, uh, yeah, that I, we finished that like just two weeks ago. Um, and then, I mean, I've been writing for a, a long time and like I, I made a short film that I actually shot last summer um, called Ramona and the Jimmies. It, it's an absurdist comedy noir, but it actually has kind of elements of the videos that I've made because I play with like, you know, one person playing multiple characters. Um, so that's coming out. And then I've written a movie musical that's a feature um, that I've been uh, trying to make for some time. But hey, it's hard to make an original musical. It's hard for, yeah. for, to convince people to take a chance on that. Yeah, you can't get people to take a chance on established musicals these days. Exactly. I know. And so I'm trying to figure out a way, trying to finagle. I've been trying to finagle yeah. for like a while how to how to go about it. So yeah, it's, um, it's a project very near and dear to my heart. It's like semi autobiographical about a young girl who loves musical theater. So I think that people who liked my videos would really like <laughs> this film. <laughs> I will leave you with the question of what okay. is, what is your favorite video out of all of the lip sync videos that you've done? What is your favorite? <sighs> People have asked me this before, and it's hard to answer. Um, They're all your children, I know. I know. Well, like the one that I like rewatching the most, or like, which is the one that you're proudest of? The one that I'm proudest of. I think I'm gonna have to go with Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to say that one. I because that one. I mean, that one is the most successful one, right. but like apart from that, like I, I feel like, cause I used to sing that song. It's uh -huh. in its entirety. Like when I was in high school, like at parties to like <laughs> make the popular kids like me. Cause I was like, so like nerdy and they would always think it was really funny. And so I feel like I've been wanting to do a reenactment of that specific song for like so long. And I really feel like I did it justice. Yeah, I think you did too. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> they're they're a delight. They are they are a bright spot on a rainy day. Oh, thanks. Uh, thank you so much for your time and talking to me at nine a.m. in California. Hey, anytime. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. And your Taylor Swift album came out the night before. Uh, I did a live last night. I know. A listening I know. party. Oh my god, it was so amazing! I can't wait to listen to this album over and over and over again. Yeah, we haven't. My wife and I haven't listened to it yet, but we're. Oh, gonna... you're in for a treat. Yeah, Mary, thank you for your time. Thank you. Great. And thanks everybody for watching. Have a great weekend.